Hi, and welcome to our December 2021 Friday Facts and Fun. Because it is the holidays, we have the Christmas tree here behind me, I thought I would talk a little about other holiday traditions and maybe even a little about our Christmas traditions and where they came from. Because not everyone believes in Christmas, not everyone celebrates Christmas, but there are a lot of different religious and cultural holidays celebrated in the month of November and December, kind of between our Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'll start first with Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is a Jewish celebration. It started way back in Old Testament times there was something called the Maccabean Revolution. And when the Maccabees revolted against the uh, foreign rulers, they then went to cleanse the temple, what's their church in Jerusalem. In order for the temple to be fully cleansed, they had to light a menorah and have it lit in the temple with the light and the uh, incense for eight days. But there was a problem. They only had enough oil for the menorah to stay lit for one day. God gave them a miracle, and the menorah actually burned for the eight days, long enough for the temple to be cleansed. So this is the celebration that Jewish people celebrate to this day. It is not their biggest celebration. It is not even mentioned in their Torah, but it is a part of their culture and their history, and so they celebrate it. There are a lot of things in common with our Christmas tradition. So there are candles. <laughs> Obviously, the menorah is candles now. It is a time for family. Children are given gifts, and they gather and have special foods. They play games. Moving back to Christianity, a branch of Christianity is Catholicism, the Catholic Church. And when the Catholic Church expanded with settling into the Americas, in Mexico they found a tradition where people traveled at this time of year, they did family things, and so they kind of incorporated what was existing to help teach the people about the Christmas story. So this is how Las Posadas came into being. Las Posadas is the journey that Joseph and Mary made to Bethlehem to pay their taxes and there found no room in the inn and the baby Jesus was born. In Las Posadas, the people have several, they can do it in one night or several nights. It depends on the, the choice of the, those participating. But in Mexico, it usually was over several nights. And there would be like a parade from one house to the next. At each house, they would be asked and they would be told there was no room. Then they would go on to the next house, the next house, and eventually normally end up at the church where there was a manger for baby Jesus. Um, candles were carried to light their way. They, they sang, and there were special foods that were eaten afterwards. Sound familiar? Yeah, another thing in common. To me, it sounds wonderful. It's a great way for the family to get together, to participate, to remember the reason for the season. And part of what makes us who, who we are is our history and our culture. And so if you come from um, Hispanic descent, particularly from Mexico and South America, the countries that that generally had Las, Las Posadas, it has moved into the United States now. And if that's part of your culture, you should feel overjoyed to be able to celebrate that. The next event I wanna talk about is not a religious event. This time of year, actually from December 26th through January 2nd, some people celebrate Kwanzaa. 
Kwanzaa is a pan-African holiday. It, it is for people, for African Americans and people who have maybe been born in America but have returned to their African roots. And it is to celebrate their culture and their history. Again, part of their celebration focuses on lights. They have a candle set that's very similar to menorah. It looks like a menorah a little bit, but it's called the Kinara. And again, it has, if I remember right here, it has seven candles on it. And each candle represents one of the tenets of their belief. The major parts of those are unity, creativity, faith, and giving gifts. So again, at the time that Nkanza is celebrated, gifts are given, the candles are lit, there's lots of family celebrations, and there are special foods that are served. Again, something in common, right? There is another celebration. It's very little known, at least uh, I had never heard of it before this year, but there's a celebration in Mexico, but it's only in certain parts of Mexico. It started in a place called Oaxaca, and that's, it's spelled very strange, O-A-X-A-C-A in Mexico. This place was a, a place where there were lots of wood carvers one year there were just tons and tons and there were they had a marketplace where people came and bought and traded things and one year there were tons and tons of radishes so the wood carvers began carving the radishes and on december 23rd they had a big market to sell all the radishes and the the carved radishes sold better so it's continued into the modern day it actually started in the 1890s, a long time ago now. And I'm going to put you up some pictures so you can see the carved radishes. Hopefully you'll enjoy those. Again, there's the family, there's foods, there's a festive atmosphere. The radish carving has evolved into including other things in the market, such as corn husk made into dolls which we did as a, a project here one time. We might have to do that again. Sounds interesting. And then I wanna to move towards our holiday of Christmas. So a lot of people think Christmas and now in the world today it is very commercialized and it's all about giving gifts and buying things. But Christmas is about the birth of Christ. But a lot of the things that we associate with Christmas weren't part of that original birth of Christ time. For example, the Christmas tree behind me, as Christianity spread across the world, people who had different traditions were encountered. And the fir tree, the Yule tree, the fir tree and the Yule logs were part of the Celtic and Druid tradition in what is now Great Britain, England, Ireland, Scotland area. So in order to draw those people in, the priest incorporated the tree and added the Star of Bethlehem at the top. Sorry, our tree doesn't have a star. It has ribbons instead, but they added the Star of Bethlehem at the top. They added candles to, to talk about the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. Again, traditions evolve over time, so ours looks a little different today, but that is, that is partly how we got those things. And there are other parts of Christmas that also were brought in in order to draw people in. Again, Christmas, in addition to celebrating the birth of Jesus, is the time when we spend time with family, we enjoy special foods, we give each other gifts in uh, anticipation, and to represent the gifts of the Magi. So th those are wonderful. In more modern times, well, even in, in further back times, Santa Claus came to be. And this was based on a Catholic saint, Saint Nicholas, who the story is gave 
a gift of money into the shoes that were left outside the door, which allowed a, some young ladies to get married. They had to have a dowry. Their family had no money. St. Nicholas heard about it, and he left money in their shoe. Well, this, over time, evolved, and so then Santa St. Nicholas began leaving gifts for all good children, and it was usually left in their stocking, and if they were bad, he didn't leave them gifts, he left them cold. But in some Scandinavian countries, Santa didn't come alone. Santa was called St. Nicholas, or St. Nicholas, which eventually we evolved into Santa Claus, but Santa came with a helper, and Santa would leave the gifts, but if the children were bad, the Krampus would uh, take away the gifts, and Santa would normally leave a gold branch, also if they were good. The Krampus would take the gold branch and leave a silver one, so you could tell by what branch the child had, whether they had been good or bad. And I'm gonna show you some pictures of Krampus. As I said, this is something in a lot of Scandinavian countries, Germanic, Austria and Germany and Switzerland and those kind of areas. And they, they do parades and it has, in recent years, moved to America. Dallas has a big Krampus event. And there's movies for Krampus as well as there were for the Hanukkah that you can go watch. I will warn you, the Krampus movie is a horror movie so you probably don't want the children to watch it. We have lots of Christmas movies. Um, we have, I'm not sure if the library has some Hanukkah movies, but there are some Hanukkah movies. So you can learn more about these events. That is all until next year. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, whichever one you celebrate. And we will see you in the new year.